between incredibly long hours in incredibly extreme conditions. It was brutally hard for everybody involved. We shot in a real mine for like 10, 11 days. We were in the real forest schlepping up the side. You know, we shot in a, a real house uh, that was incredibly small. It looked amazing, but it was tiny. Uh, and shooting with massive cameras, there's not a lot of room, and you know, extreme conditions. You're working with cameras that are much bigger, more complicated. I mean, the big yeah. thing 3D does is it sucks up light. It wants more light than you can possibly imagine. Shooting yeah. 100 ASA. So you're basically, in terms of filming technology, in terms of exposure, you're back 20 years. So that part of it is a little frustrating, and, and the electrics department is actually who it is the hardest on. Rather than moving a 2K, you're moving a 20. Uh, you're moving, you know, big, massive lights, and, and we're, you know, I'm shooting underground, and, and that's what you need in order to generate the light required to make it look dark. All those things made it made it tough, but everybody was incredibly dedicated and, and incredibly passionate. You design the movie to have 3D crescendos. You don't want every single shot to be, you know, woo. You don't want every single thing to be coming in your face because then it doesn't mean anything. You literally design the sequences to uh, feature as much depth as possible. You're really feeling the world. You're putting the audience into the environment. And then you're building up to the 3D crescendos, the moments where things do come at you, the moments where things do lean out into the audience, where you can press into the audience so that it has maximum dramatic impact. <laughs> the rule of thumb that we went is that you can do it as far as your eyes can fuse. Meaning that if something comes too far forward, uh, what happens is, is one of your eyes will see it and the other eye won't. That is what can cause you some physical pain. When you edit, you edit with the right eye only. And then you put it together with a 3D and then you start seeing what the stereo image is. We have this helicopter shot, comes around, the camera comes up and then swings around and pans following a police car across a bridge. Well, when we cut that in, you know, because we cut with the right eye only, uh, when we saw it in 3D for the first time, the left eye swings around and hits the skid. So you're seeing the skid of the helicopter. So at the end of the shot, you're like, whoa, what is that? Because the left eye is seeing this giant skid in the frame and the right eye is not seeing anything. So we then trimmed the shot back and then lined it up. We could see 3D live on set and then in post-production. We couldn't play it back on set. We have to play it back the next day, but we could certainly watch it live on set. You could see exactly what you were getting. You knew um, how far to push things, how far to, you know, leave the hand hanging over the counter, how far out we could put <laughs> it into the audience. But for that shot, we had to know where we were going to cut out of it. The next shot, you have that, you know, the 3D is way out here, and the next shot, everything's way back. So that's why that shot dissolves to the next cut. We knew when we shot it that it had to dissolve to the next shot. <laughs> the stereographer is constantly watching it in 3D. Usually we'll watch like a take or something in 3D, and then, some, then other times I'll just focus Depending on what the shot is, if it's more dramatic, then I'll just focus on the actors and, and, and just watch them. And, and know that the 3D is being, being taken care of by the stereographer. You've seen all the dailies in 3D, so you understand what it is. Um, so we cut it in 2D, conform it in 3D, watch it in 3D, and then go back and tweak it. <laughs> Shooting on digital technology allows you to uh, correct all the old imperfections that 3D would have, the misalignments, the, the things like that, that would cause Physical pain when you'd watch it, if you know if the movie was more than 10 minutes long at you know, the theme park, it would try and rip your brain in half. We don't do that anymore. You know, we want to go through this film every single frame, every single shot, frame by frame, making sure that everything is, is going to give you, maximize the 3D, but at the same time give you the most pleasurable viewing experience. You can digitally manipulate the 3D. Uh, as you're shooting, you have a 3D stereographer, so you have somebody who's pulling depth and how exaggerated the 3D is, uh, whether you're seeing hugely into the background and things are coming way into the foreground, within every shot, so somebody's actually pulling that is the same way somebody pulls focus. That allows you to have so much more control over what the, how the 3D works, um, so that from cut to cut, you can actually feather the 3D from cut to cut, so it's not bouncing depth from uh, perspective pers perspective, so that, it, again, the whole experience of watching it becomes a seamless event.